Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have the latest from the live radar and for the latest weather warnings as we have some numerous warnings issued for the coming days. We've been speaking about this a lot in the past few videos, some really heavy rain not only through Saturday but to start December on Monday and Tuesday. This is where we have got pretty widespread warnings across England and Wales as we are going to see some really quite heavy and persistent rain. We'll look at that in more detail on the latest UKV, looking at the temperatures and the precipitation over the coming days. It is going to be cold at times over the coming days between weather systems, especially Saturday into Sunday. But when we've got the rain around, it will be chilly, but the temperatures will be relatively mild. So we're not looking at any chances of any proper wintriness. Could be a bit of back edge snow for some higher ground on Saturday evening. But apart from that, it is all going to be some pretty persistent cold rain. Longer range, we continue to see a fairly strong signal for a very unsettled, stormy start to December, like we're seeing on Monday and Tuesday, but we've already got warnings issued. That does look like it's going to continue out to around the 6th, 7th of December. And by that point, we do start to see a change. How quick will the change be and what exactly will it end up being is still too early to say. But I think we can say with pretty good confidence now that there is going to be a change by that point. Now, we might not see too much difference at the surface, at least initially, but it does look like it will be drying up a little bit as we start to see more of a high pressure influence. As we said in yesterday's video, pretty much every day we have one run that shows something really cold and blocked, or at least something that shows those sort of prospects. And once again, we've got that today. We've actually got it from both the GM and the ECMWF. Now, they're not actually that cold at the surface. As I said, things do take a bit of time, uh, not necessarily looking at any very cold conditions in the next sort of 10 days. But they do set up a pattern that would deliver or would have good chances to deliver some pretty big colder spells later on in the season with high pressure up towards Svalbard, Greenland and Iceland. Both GM and ECMW showing that, all evolving around that day 10 time frame and beyond. So still a little bit unreliable, but the fact that we are seeing this pretty much every day from at least one run means it definitely has got fairly strong prospects. And we'll, of course, explore that in the second half of the video. So do remember, if you enjoy the videos, make sure you like and subscribe. Now, if you start on the live radar, we are kind of in between weather systems today. But you can see this evening, as I'm calling this around 9pm, the next weather system is moving in. And this big blob of rain across Wales and southwest England is going to continue to move in overnight. It's going to persist for much of Saturday. And we are going to see a lot of heavy rain across the Midlands. We have got a quite a large yellow rain warning. Heavier showers further north, it's again, could cause some issues in a few spots, but this should be showery and should move through. It's this area further southwards, which could be pretty horrific for Saturday afternoon or for morning through to the afternoon. You can see at the moment it's pretty cold still in the north. It's cold air not too far away, but for most we are in the milder air. That colder air will get dragged in, though, in around 24 hours' time once that low and that rain does clear out into the North Sea. Now, if you look at the latest weather warnings, we have got this extensive rain warning issued for Saturday covering all of southwest England, much of central eastern England, and much of south Wales. Uh, as I said, mostly it's going to impact the Midlands, but you can see the warning is extended elsewhere as well. From 6am until midnight tomorrow, of heavy rain causing travel disruption. You can see rain heavy at times expected to develop across southwest England on Friday night. That's exactly what we just saw on the live radar. And then spread northwards and eastwards during Saturday before clearing into the North Sea on Saturday night. Now, you may look at that rain and think, well, it's already in Wales. Surely it's not going to you know, not move much in the next 24 hours. But that's the issue. It is very slow moving and it is going to back build, i.e. more precipitation will form further westwards as it does clear through. You see most areas seeing around an inch of rain, which in itself isn't ridiculous amounts, but of course a large area could cause some river flooding and some river levels to build. And you see some high ground seeing sort of two, three inches. And again, on top of some heavy rain we've seen in the past few weeks and further heavy rain in the coming days, this could all tot up and cause further issues. Now into Monday, we've got three rain warning issued. You can see for South Wales, we've got one from midnight on Monday until 3 p.m. on Monday for further heavy rain. Again, we'll look at these in a bit more detail near the time. But at the moment, looking at another inch of rain, maybe two to three inches in some spots. Southwest England here from midnight on Monday until 3 p.m. Again, we're looking at an inch of rain, maybe two to three inches in a few spots. And then one covering much of southern and southeastern parts from 8 a.m. on Monday all the way to 6 a.m. on Tuesday. You can see it's a west to east transition as that rain clears out into the North Sea. 
Again, looking at YD an inch of rain, maybe two or three inches in a few spots. All very similar, but just slightly different timing warning timings with those warnings. And that's why it is like that. And you can see that warning still there into Tuesday. Now, if you actually have a look at the latest UK V to look at that precipitation in a bit of detail, you can see the rain moving in at the moment, and you can see it continues to push in into Saturday morning, and it really doesn't move much in the next kind of 12 hours. And then it kind of back builds, and we continue to see more and more rain, and it spreads away into the evening. So I do think the heaviest rain will have cleared around lunchtime, because it does persist, especially for northern areas of the warning zone and for northern England until the afternoon and evening. And you can see there's a bit of back edge snow there over the higher ground as it does clear away. Some winter showers across Scotland there. Perhaps even a snow warning could be issued for those. They do look quite hefty, but it is convection based, so it's very unpredictable. You can see into the early hours of Sunday, it's pretty dry, it's pretty clear, and you can see cold air is sweeping in from the north. So it's likely to be pretty frosty and icy. So a very cold start to Sunday for most, especially northern areas. But you see quickly into Sunday afternoon, already the next weather front moving in. So a cold day on Sunday, but it is a 24 hour blip. And you can see heavy rain starting to move back in, a bit of transitional snow for Scotland on the leading edge. And then the heavy rain pretty much arrives bang on as we head into the 1st of December. Look at the rain initially moving through widely, not too heavy. It's, you know, moderate, heavy in places. And it does fragment, but the big wall of rain arrives there into the early hours of Monday. Look at that. Yellows and greens, and even some oranges and reds indicating some really heavy precipitation, looking abysmal there for much of Monday, lasting most of the day. And then some really heavy rain as the cold front eventually sweeps through with potentially some squall features and line convection building in there through the evening. So it could be a really bad rush hour there in the southeast for the first day of December on Monday evening. Now that does clear, and you can see why those warnings transition from western areas, Monday morning into the lunchtime period, to eastern areas for the early hours of Tuesday. So eventually that clears, and into Tuesday, again, calm between the storms. Yes, showers around and heaviest further westwards, but it doesn't look too bad. And even Wednesday doesn't look too bad either, as the low pressure system is reasonably weak. Now, if you have a look at the max temperatures over the coming days, you can see as we head into Saturday, it's cold in the north. Even further southwards, it's pretty chilly with that rain moving through, but most around 5 to 10 degrees. Overnight, though, temperatures are going to drop away quite rapidly further northwards, widely around freezing. Further southwards, maybe hovering a couple of degrees above freezing, but still a very cold morning. Of course, in and amongst a lot of heavy rain, it's not you know, too usual, but it's because we've got this pretty brisk northern wind getting drawn in from behind this low pressure system. Sunday afternoon, I said it's a cold day, very cold in the north, five to seven degrees further southwards. And then as we head into Monday, potentially frosts in the north, but most are above freezing. And by Monday afternoon, it's mild in the south, 12 or 13 degrees, colder further northwards. Again, these temperature clashes is fueling the precipitation. And then into the evening, eventually the cold front sweeps through. It's not a terribly cold air mass behind it, but closer to average, around seven or eight degrees there. And that continues into Tuesday. Not too much of a diurnal range. I shouldn't have to worry about too much frost into the early portion of December, but it still will be chilly. It's not a very mild pattern. As we spoke about over the past few days, we've definitely seen a bit of an evolution through this very slowly in the past week or so from originally a very mild and unsettled pattern to more of a, a cooler and unsettled pattern. It's not necessarily cold, you know, no chance of any proper wintriness with this, but it's going to be chilly and it's not going to be 15 degrees and rain like we have seen sometimes this time of year. Now, if you look at the latest longer range now, if we start on the GFS. Now, yes, the GFS was the one that did actually show a little bit of blocking and colder patterns longer range. Now, today, it's the one run that doesn't show it. So this is what I mean with all the chopping and changing and unpredictability of the models. Now you can see over the coming days, it's cool and unsettled. Southerly tracking jet stream, lots of blues and purples coming out of Northern Canada, very unsettled, westerly based, unlikely to be remotely cold or properly cold in, in the following days beyond this. It's almost impossible to see that. You see this continues all the way up to day 10, and this is the point where the other runs do start to build some high pressure ridging. Now here you can see the blues and purples are not as compact together, which already implies that the tropospheric polar vortex that released the lobe across our side of the pole is breaking up a little bit. Again, that would be as a result of some high pressure trying to move northwards, but it doesn't really come to much. And we kind of see a continuation of exactly what we've got over the next couple of weeks. Cool and unsettled jet stream shifted to our south and the tropospheric polar vortex reorganizes, but it's right over the Arctic. So that means it will keep all the cold air penned in. And you see around um, the Arctic, 
All of that cold air is really pending right over the North Pole. Yes, bits and bobs spilling out to Asia, but very little spilling out into North America, really only Northern Canada, and very little spilling out into Europe either. So it is a really compact, uh, compact tropospheric polar vortex there. If we look at the temperature deviation, you can see there is not too much in the way of deviation across the Northern Hemisphere. Generally speaking, you see a lot of the blues are actually right over the Arctic, again, implying that generally air masses are where they should be by this point. Uh, again, this would not be resemblant of a colder pattern at all. Uh, we need to see quite a drastic shift from this to see something cold. But this is what I mean, massive unpredictable patterns. And as I said, it's all results of all these different climate drivers, including the sun stratospheric warming that's taking place right at the moment. Um, all these things kind of clashing together and that is causing this big uncertainty. Now, if you take that GFS run for face value and just say, I mean, that's what's going to happen, you'd think no chance of anything cold. But the other runs disagree, and this is the fun of it. We are seeing a lot of conflicting views. The GEM, which has been a pessimistic run recently, it's not really shown any interest in anything colder or blocked, does go colder and blocked today. And you see all the way out to day 10, look at that high pressure ridging towards Greenland and it's starting to show a northeasterly wind. Now, the tropospheric polar vortex, or a bit of a tropospheric polar vortex here towards northeast Canada, is still relatively strong, so it is going to try and shove low pressure systems our way. Uh, we'd really need to see that ridge build in a bit stronger and draw in this air to see anything properly cold, but at this stage it's chilly, we're drawing the air in from Scandinavia, where very cold air is starting to brew. So it's not a very cold pattern at this stage, but it's two, three days away from turning much, much colder if we draw in these blue but it will all depend on how this high battles against this low. If the low wins out, which is a possibility, then it will probably flatten, be cool and unsettled. But if the high wins out, which it does out towards day 10, you can see it across the following sort of three or four frames, that high does not move and those lows just kind of spiral on themselves. Um, yeah, we would turn much, much colder. And you can see there is a northeasterly wind pushing in at this stage, streaming in off the North Sea. It would start to be colder. Look at that, five or six degrees. Dew points are starting to turn colder, but the really cold air is not there yet. But again, some fairly strong hints, and it's two or three days away from drawing in something much, much colder. ECM WF is actually pretty similar to the GM, interestingly, today. In the longer range, not at day 10, it's similar to the GFS with the southern jet stream looking unsettled out towards day 10 with these lows diving southwards, which means that we are on the cooler side of the jets. Not much of these milder air masses getting involved. We're in the colder or chillier air, so it's said cool and unsettled. But if we look beyond that, those lows dive well to our south and similar to the GM high pressure tries to build towards Greenland. Now, the biggest issue here is there's not that much cold air across Europe. If we actually had cold air across Europe, we would be streaming in bitterly cold easterly winds. But much of Europe is actually pretty mild at this point. So again, similar to the GM, it's a few days away from putting in some very cold air. If we do actually start to tap into this cold air to our northeast, we'll have to wait and see, of course, if that would actually occur. But this definitely is not a westerly flow and not a uh, you know, jet stream dominated coming in off the North Atlantic. So although, yes, neither GM or the East of the Earth is, you know, remotely uh, within a very cold spell at all, you know, they are uh, on the path to something much colder. You know, the big takeaway is they're not remotely westerly at all. And that means regardless of what exactly we see, we are looking at a change around the 8th, 9th, 10th of December, both what the GEM and the ECM are showing. Yes, GFS is not showing it, but it was showing it yesterday. So again, we'll have to see some consistency before we actually can pinpoint the exact change we're going to see, but definitely looks like there is going to be some influence from this higher pressure, not going to be a westerly fest for the first half of December. I know some people are, uh, online have been saying it's going to be a westerly fest and maybe we don't see anything very cold, but it being a stormy westerly fest like the first few days of December, not looking likely from the looks of these runs as we do progress further into December. Now, if you look at the ensembles, you can see it's not really showing much of a change. And that's because, as I said, big picture is changing, but at the surface, what we actually see day to day probably not changing much in the first 10 days of December. We saw 
both the GM and the Eastern UF, those blocks are moved to our north, but the actual air masses don't shift much. Yes, it's more of an easterly flow, but again, the air mass is not, not that much of a shift. It's a couple of degrees change. It's not really going to show up too much here on the ensemble chart. And that's why we're really just hovering around average from the GFS ensembles. Pretty high precipitation at times, so keeping it relatively unsettled and really not seeing too much in the way of deviation from the mean, um, which has been consistent over the past few days. And again, just tells me that the models are still very uncertain. ECMWF, probably very similar. Maybe a little bit more of a colder dip longer term. But you can see those cold runs aren't actually that cold. They go down to minus 6 degrees at 850 HPA, which is just on the threshold of low-level snow. Um, so, yeah, they're not that cold at all. So, yes, a bit of a dip. But by no means is it a massive signal at all. So, still lots to play for. More very interesting runs. Uh, again, highly speculative just because of everything that's going on very little consistency between the models day on day again we do see it during the winter it is the time of year where we do see the most volatility because there's so much going on uh, but yeah especially so the start of this winter we'll have to wait and see what happens but definitely you know not all hope is lost for some colder potential yes not going to arrive in the first week of december but after that maybe even dare i say the lead up to christmas could have further prospects definitely if we go by what the gm and the east and the F, even though they aren't that cold and you know what they actually produce at day 10 and day 14 they are on that road to something much colder during the middle portion of the month so anyway, thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribing new and i'll see you again for another video soon